everybody welcome back to the next installment of this three-part series um, of course uh, this should be part two um, I may your title may be a little different on YouTube once I break these open and find out you know what's in what's in here um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this box in half uh, we're gonna see what is in uh, one of these boxes uh, that we're gonna take a look at as far as this as part of this uh, three-part unboxing series of what I've gotten from Hunter's Lodge in my most recent order um, I will say this um, and I know I've saved this more than just once this was quite possibly well it definitely is the largest order I've ever placed through them um, some of y'all probably think I'm a little crazy that's perfectly fine but I like projects like this. Um, Rusty Surplus likes projects like this. The Wolf Hunter, he does all kinds of projects like this. But most of his are uh, revolvers, typically. All right. So I've got two boxes here. Which one are we going to do today? I think we're going to go with the middle one. Or rather, what would have been the middle. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out the easier end to open here. Maybe this top end. I know this is uh, very tedious. I know sometimes you guys think I take way too long opening something up, but it'll all be worth it once I figure out how to cut into it. This looks like it might be the FR8s, the Spanish rifles. The huge thud. paper out of the way. And let's get into these Spanish FR8s. Now I did request FR8s. I really, really hope James sent me FR8s. I certainly did not want an FR7. You guys can research that and you'll understand why. He did say that these would probably need a little bit of stock repair on them. However, I got a pretty, pretty slick deal on these. Yeah, this one looks like it's kind of held together by some of the tape here. these he also did tell me that they had um, essentially a pallet of FR 7s and one of FR 8 and that's when I told him I said hey I definitely want an FR 8 because I've been looking for one of those it looks like I might now have two FR 8s
Very cool. And yes, I know. Stocks are a little worse for wear. Not that big a deal. I'm not overly concerned. But there are my two Spanish FR8s. Very nice. I'm pretty tickled about these. Yes, I know. The stocks look rough. Yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> I'll be honest because, you know, for the price I paid for these, which I'll probably talk about that in my last video, um, but the price I paid for these, yeah, let's just say um, it was a no-brainer for sure. As a matter of fact, I don't even remember off the top of my head what I paid. I'd have to have to go back and reference my invoice. <laughs> it's been a while. I've slept since then. I mean, honestly, these are definitely some fixer-uppers. But it's not like they can't be fixed up. Okay, so... Now, they may not have matching bolts. And it doesn't look like they do. They do not. But that's okay. Bolts. We're going to take a quick, close look at the bolts. There's a hair on that bolt. That's okay. Yeah, they've been loved, well loved a little bit, but it appears to all be there. Let's take a look at that other bolt. This one has a little bit of, I don't know if that's really, it doesn't appear to be pitting. Well, maybe it is pitting, but I don't know. It looks like it's been refinished at some point, possibly by the by the Spanish, I don't know. Um, but anyway, let me pause this for a second. I'm going to readjust this camera so you guys get a little bit closer view. Alright guys, we're back. So now let's take a little bit closer look at these Spanish FR8s. Now why did I want an FR8? Well, because it's stronger, number one, than an FR7. And it was definitely made for the 7.62 NATO round. Um, and these are the ones, you guys can do a lot of searching in the internet forums. Um, these are the ones that, if I'm not mistaken, people were saying that, yeah, since this is a large ring Mauser, it's certainly okay to, to shoot 308 Winchester out of it because it will actually handle it. Um, just right off the bat, you can tell there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of corrosion going on there. Um, I'm not terribly concerned about that. Um, there probably, probably likely is some rust beneath the wood line, but I'm not... You know, I'm not like I said. I'm not overly concerned about that. You know, overall, it is. I think James did tell me. Oh yeah, so I can actually see the bore in this one. It's it's good sharp rifling. Um, but let's just give it a quick once over. Of course, this is a busted stock. You can tell it's been repaired here. You can tell there's also some some repair spots here as well as here and here. Um, but the nice thing is is at the time of this filming notice all the grease slathered into that flash hider <laughs> the nice thing is at least at the time of this filming uh, RTG parts or RTG Robert RTG they actually have um, some of these brand new new old stock um, FR8 socks and I have all the hardware here on this one, which makes it nothing to swap this out and uh, you know put a brand new stock on, and then have you know really nice FR8 actually. Uh, the rear sight is completely intact, bolt release is intact. I mean, your front sight is intact. Um, I am missing the on this one. I'm kind of missing that that cleaning kit tube that goes in here, but that's not a big deal. Those can be gotten cheap. Um, let's see what else do we have here? Your sling loop is in there, as well as your loop back here, as well as on the bottom. So that's good. But this one, you know, I'm not. 
it's not hurting my feelings at all. Now this one over here, this one probably the stock looks a little worse for wear on it, but it's actually a prettier stock. Um, it's got a much nicer grain to it. Um, of course, your butt stocks on these are always sort of beat up. I mean, your butt plates. Of course, this one's missing a whole chunk there. That's okay. It does have the cleaning the cleaning kit tube here. Of course, you can see that Fabrica de Armas, uh, Corona, or Corona, Corona, um, that, that beautiful Spanish crest. And there's the big busted spot. Man, this was a beautiful stock at some point. It's a shame that it got busted. Of course, it was probably sitting in a crate, you know, like everything else. It just gets thrown in there when I get rid of it. Um, but everything appears to be here. Let's check the bore on this one off camera. Oh, it's kind of hard to see because of the electrical tape. Let's see. This one has good strong rifling as well. Um, of course, up here in the top left, you'll see the pictures of those um, of those bores. You know, honestly, these do have some kind of built up rust gunk in here. It's like rust and grease, but they look quite nice. Um, I'm trying to see the date on this one, this FR8. I'll insert a picture on this one. This one is a 1948. I'll get a good picture of that crest. I have to put some chalk in there for it to show up. And this other one we have, it's so worn I can't even hardly see it. Actually, it looks like 1940 something, but I can't, I just can't make it out. I mean, it is pretty much gone. But I'll insert pictures in there. But, you know, that's a that's a pretty slick deal in my opinion. Um, oh well, you guys wouldn't know. How would you know if it was a deal? Stand by, and I will tell you. Actually, I don't have a copy of my invoice right here. Let me pause this for just a second. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Had to go reference my invoice. Um, now, I do buy a lot of stuff um, from Hunter's Lodge. Um, you know, sometimes they'll cut me a deal. Sometimes they'll cut other people deals too. You just never know. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, that being said, for these busted stock FR8s, and I think James cut me a good deal on it because, you know, these stocks will have to be replaced, and these stocks are certainly not cheap. Um, I want to say they run about $200 a piece. Um, and truth be told, both of them really need to be replaced. I'll probably end up replacing both of them with new with new old stock ones. Once again, they're not completely matching either. Um, you kind of got a uh, you got mismatched bolts. Now that being said, I paid eighty eight dollars a piece for each one of these FR eights. I thought that was a pretty freaking good deal. Um, I'm ecstatic actually with what I received because you know. This is a nice little short 308 bolt action. Um, you know, this was the last true raw before they actually developed the set me. Um, and, you know, I think it's really cool to have this interesting little juncture in history um, between their bolt action gun or their bolt action rifles and then what would be known as one of the most commonly used rifles. In the world, uh, that being the Setme, as well as the HK91, the HKG3, you know, they they even have the similar triple tree, um, and it was really cool because this is a neat um, rifle that was kind of in that little transition phase. Um, so I think it's really neat. I mean, they, these are very very cool rifles. Um, I'm just tickled to death that I've actually got. But that both of them actually were, or actually are, FR8s as denoted by the serial or model number right there in front of the serial number. So these are indeed true FR8s. So nothing to worry about from that perspective. Do I think this is worth it? Oh, heck yes. Most definitely. I think this was an awesome deal. And, you know, 
the one one last side note that I wanted to add on these is that you know these hand guards are in good shape um, as far as I can tell uh, maybe something going on under here that I haven't looked into yet um, it appears as though, as though the rifles are all here no major damage from what I can tell to either one of them um, you know you could actually well you could shoot this one probably the way it is I'm not so sure about this one with the whole big chunk of stock missing but you can get replacement stocks um, of course I'll be checking the headspace on this I do got a set of uh, 308 headspace gauges actually I think I do if I don't I'll have to get a set um, but one of the interesting things about these stocks you can take those uh, Spanish um, M43 Mausers and you can actually cut them down and utilize them on these rifles so let's say you guys end up deciding to get one of these and you can't get a stock for it or RTG sold out of them by then you can take a M43 stock and you can cut it down and use it for the FR8 because um, they're both kind of a large ring Mauser so that being said I think this was an awesome deal I am actually really surprised um, of the condition of these especially the bore condition on each one of these um, super stoked about that I'll try to get some pictures of the crest maybe put a little bit of chalk in there so you guys so it'll show up for you guys um, and of course you know get pictures of the bore everybody wants to see that everybody's always curious as far as what's going on with the bore because you don't want something that's trashed um, but I'm gonna tell you this um, Comparing what I've been getting from Hunter's Lodge compared to Hunter's Lot or compared to Royal Tiger Imports, you got a much better bet, or you got a much better chance of getting on with a usable bore than one that looks like a sewer pipe. You guys take it for what it's worth. I don't care what you end up getting. A lot of these old surplus rifles, you don't get the nice pristine surplus anymore. Um, I think Atlantic probably put some SKSs out there the other day, but inherently anything that you get is likely going to need a little bit of work done to it and if you're not scared to do that then you know here's a way to mitigate that you know to, to mitigate you know spending so much um, to get something pristine you can get something like this it's going to require a little bit of elbow, elbow grease a little bit of work a little bit of cleanup but you can end up with a very nice shootable rifle um, and, you know may or may not win any beauty contest I guess it's you know how much work do you want to put into them I mean obviously this one <laughs> I gotta replace that stock I mean it's a chunk of wood missing so obviously I'm getting a new stock for that but anyway uh, just want to thank you guys thank you thank you for tuning in thank you for bearing with me because um, I know my production quality isn't the best of course I'm just a one-man show here um, but you know, I just like sharing this passion with anybody else that's interested. And, you know, as always, thank you to all my subscribers, everybody that likes to, everybody that likes, comments, and shares. Make sure, once again, you guys hit that bell notification. You can sign up for alerts anytime I put new videos out, anytime I throw some kind of deal out there, notifying you guys, that, hey, this is a great deal. You might want to jump on it. You know, things of that nature. Because, you know, I like to help everybody else out. And, uh, because it really stinks to try to buy something and you know you not even know what you're gonna get now once again I got a special cut price on these FR8s I don't know what they're gonna end up advertising them for um, your mileage may vary your mileage may also vary with the quality um, it's not like I told James hey I'm gonna put this on YouTube I never said that he just said I just he just said hey you know since you buy so much from us he's like I'll cut you a deal on this or that you know and occasionally I get a deal so I'm super happy like I said with how these turned out um, in my opinion pretty nice condition um, FR8s um, which as you all well know is not very easily acquired especially not nowadays because surplus is drying up it's just not that much so anyway, thanks everybody for watching and stay tuned for next time when we're going to do that last box. We're going to check out that last box and see what's in it. I think you guys will be super surprised. I know I will be um, <laughs> for better or worse. Hopefully better. We'll find out. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching and you guys have a great day.